Reutz has a session on tonight. You'll pay for me books. She's deep enough. Thank you, good. She left me no choice. I'm gonna finish her. Finish all of them. The movie begins in 1974 in Northern Ireland town, where two members of a mafia group enter a local bar. Unbeknownst to them, a criminal woman named Doran McCann, her brother Curtis, and their accomplices, Seamus McKenna and Conan McGrath, strategically position themselves at a distance. With sinister intent, Seamus and Conan plant a bomb near the bar and calmly walk away. However, Doran notices a group of school children playing near the rigged car. Realizing the imminent danger, she shouts at them to run away. Unfortunately, it is too late as the bomb explodes, resulting in the tragic deaths of the mafias and the innocent children. Doran, Curtis, Conan, and Seamus escape in a getaway car. Later, we are introduced to our main character, a man named Finbar. He is engaged in shotgun practice with the local sheriff, Vincent. A skilled marksman, Finbar outshines the sheriff in the competition and wins the bet. Afterwards, they head to Finbar's residence to discuss the increasing crime rate. God, that's a bit of a mess. Maroon. So you'll be looking for some metal case in town then. <laughs> Later that evening, Finbar goes to a crowded bar for a few beers. For some reason, he is also holding a picture where a person's face is circled. The bar's announcer brings a famous singer named Bart to the stage. Bart impresses everyone with his excellent skills. Surprisingly, we learn that the photo Finbar is holding is of none other than Bart. After some time, he drives to a secluded spot near the forest. He then opens his car's trunk, revealing Bart trapped inside. Armed with a shotgun, Finbar leads him to a hillside, hands him a shovel, and instructs him to dig. The singer follows his orders and soon realizes the area is a makeshift graveyard for Finbar's victims. Bart inquires with Finbar about how many people he has killed to date, but the latter remains silent. As the two engage in one final conversation, Bart reveals that he has a troubled youth. He was a hot-tempered lad who may have angered a few people, but now he has put all that behind him. Deep in thought, Finbar seems to reflect on his words. However, the moment takes a dark turn when he abruptly shoots at Bart and ends his life. He then buries the singer in the same pit he dug and plants a tree as a grim marker above it, at this point, it becomes clear that Finbar is a professional killer who takes lives for money. Next, he goes to his manager Robert's house, where Robert's wife Josie welcomes him, asks about his favorite dish, and assures him she'll make it for him. A new team member, Kevin, arrives and grabs bread from Josie's basket. Finbar is displeased by this, commenting on the impatience of younger people. Finbar then meets with Robert and informs him that he has completed the assigned task. He also notices Kevin leaving in his car. He suddenly proposes that his manager assign all future contracts to Kevin. Here, Finbar confides about his dark acts since his wife's passing, expressing his desire to cease the killing and pursue a different path. He also shares that his wife always wished him to live a better life, helping and caring for others. This revelation shocks Robert, who asks about his future plans. Finbar says he wants to engage in farming and growing plants in the garden. Appreciating his decision, Robert hands over the payment for completing the contract and bids him farewell. The following day, Finbar starts farming outside his home. He clears the field and goes to the town to purchase various seeds. Upon his return, he visits his kind neighbor, Rita's house, and joins her for dinner. The older woman is delighted to hear about his new venture into farming. She also questions his cooking skills, comparing them with his late wife's. As the two continue conversing, it becomes clear that they are gradually building a connection over shared memories. Afterwards, Finbar goes to the other side of his neighborhood where he meets a girl named Moya. She is fishing on a bridge and seeing her struggle, he offers her a handkerchief to help pull the nylon string. Here, Finbar learns that the girl was instructed to catch a fish for dinner. I'll be happy to help with that. Moya accidentally drops her food box in the water while pulling the bait. Finbar notices wounds on her neck, but the little girl hides them and runs away. Finbar meets Moya's mother, Sinead, at her workplace revealing that she works as a bartender. Finbar commends her work and explains Moya's lunchbox incident, taking the blame for distracting her. Sinead understands, but later that night, Finbar encounters Moya as he leaves the bar. He assures her that he took responsibility for the lunchbox mishap with her mother. However, she remains silent, so he leaves the decision to her and walks away. 
Moya decides to follow him, and when they reach Moya's house, her uncle, Curtis, appears outside. Finbar senses something dangerous about him. He was one of the individuals who planned the bombing. There's a sense of something big being prepared. Finbar brings Moya a food basket and hands it to Sinead the following day. He notices Moya sitting alone and asks if she's okay. She seems afraid and hands him a bullet. When he inquires about it, she remains tight-lipped. Curtis arrives and Moya rushes inside the house when she sees him. Uh, here we go. Catch you later, princess. He asks Sinead for food supplies and indirectly refers to Finbar as a predatory individual before leaving with the food. And she reveals that her brother married Curtis' sister and was killed. In the next scene, Finbar shows Robert the bullet Moya gave him and requests his help in getting rid of Curtis, citing the harm he's caused to the little girl. Even after learning how Curtis threatens Moya, Robert declines assistance. Count me out. Later, Finbar stalks Curtis from a distance, seemingly planning something. As Curtis was on his way home, he met Finbar, who kindly offered him a ride. Curtis graciously accepted, and during their conversation, Finbar shared stories about his past love for shooting and asked Curtis about his own interest in guns. Curtis expressed his fascination with the topic, and Finbar mentioned his unique collection of rare ammunition. He stopped the car, opened the trunk, and showed Curtis an extraordinary firearm. Finbar then drove Curtis to the forest with harmful intentions, but Curtis fought back, leading to a showdown. Unexpectedly, Kevin intervened, explaining his presence. He had been assigned by Robert to keep an eye on Finbar. Following the intense encounter, they buried Curtis and relaxed at a bar. As they conversed, Kevin revealed his admiration for Finbar's skills, confessing to being a fan. He then asserts that he takes lives when he needs money, but he still can't match a body count like Finbar's, calling it psychotic. This infuriates him, who states that taking a life is a serious matter and that if he ever hears Kevin laughing at someone else's death, he'll confront him. When Curtis fails to attend their usual meeting spot two days later, Doron becomes concerned. So she decides to go out and search for him, Soon, she arrives at Sinead's residence and asks about her brother. Still, she reveals that she hasn't seen him either. When Sinead expresses her frustration by speaking ill of him, the enraged Dorian grabs her by the neck and reprimands her. She then checks Curtis' gun and discovers a missing bullet, causing her even more worry. Subsequently, Dorian leaves and contacts her employer to inquire about Curtis. She learns that someone in the city might provide assistance. In the next scene, Doreen follows instructions and goes to Robert's house to discuss her missing brother, Curtis. Upon hearing Curtis's name, Robert acts as if he doesn't know him and says his men are unavailable. Unfortunately, as she is about to leave, Doran finds a bullet on the floor. To her surprise, it fits perfectly into the empty space in her gun. She then points the gun at Robert and demands that he tell the truth. The manager confesses that Curtis is deceased, but clarifies that he did not kill him. He is forced to reveal that a man named Finbars did it a few days ago. You would get the Doran shoots and kills Robert. His wife, Josie, hears the disturbance and rushes to the room, but she is intercepted by Doran, who asks her to wait outside. Doran also discloses that her spouse has been killed and instructs the distraught Josie to return to her room. Following this, she and her associates are now determined to find the individual who took Curtis's life. Later, Finbar and Kevin hear about Robert's demise from Josie. Finbar first comforts Josie and assures her that they will manage everything. In response, she discloses that a woman was aggressively asking about Curtis. This leads the men to suspect that someone is seeking retribution for his death. Finbar and Kevin destroy all the documents related to their previous and upcoming plans, and he advises Josie to contact the police. Desperate to find clues about his whereabouts, Dorian persuades Seamus to visit a store, claiming to be Finbar's nephew. The store owner believes him and accurately provides Finbar's address. Seamus encounters Sheriff Vincent at the door. The sheriff, unfamiliar with Seamus, questions his presence in the city. The shopkeeper mentions that the guy is Finbar's nephew, but Vincent doubts it. Soon, the group arrives at Finbar's house, where they discover his war photos. At the same time, Finbar is also on his way home when he notices the lights on in his room. Sensing something is wrong, he urges Kevin to stop the car. The two then head to a nearby location to monitor the house's activities. 
While waiting, Kevin reveals that he left home, got into a bar fight, and won it, which caught Robert's attention and led to his employment. Finbar shares his own story, explaining his transformation from a war-hardened soldier to a killer after his wife's death and when Robert came calling. The following day, Doren is furious because Finbar didn't return home all night. She expresses her frustration by damaging his car parked outside the house. Kevin witnesses this and points his gun at her, but Finbar stops him from shooting at her. Meanwhile, Rita emerges from her house and looks at Doreen. The gangster woman confronts her and asks about Finbar. However, when Rita makes a hurtful comment, Doreen punches her in the face and knocks her unconscious before leaving the house with her associates. Finbar and Kevin rush to Rita and carry her inside her house as soon as Dorian leaves. He then anonymously contacts medical staff to treat Rita. Later at Kevin's house, Finbar finds a burned newspaper talking about the Belfast bombing. Curious, he goes to a store and purchases the same newspaper to learn more. The article reveals that the prime suspects in the bombing case are none other than Dorian, her brother, and their associates. Subsequently, Finbar discovers the group's hiding place where they have assembled different explosives. He then goes to an ongoing football match attended by the city, including Doran and her associates. At the open stadium, Conan discovers their names and pictures, which have just been published in the newspaper as suspects. This rattles him, so he suggests leaving the country as soon as possible, but Doran refuses because she wants revenge for her brother's death. Meanwhile, Finbar tracks down Doran during the match and follows her when she walks to the restroom. Unfortunately for Finbar, Doran sneaks up on him from behind and points a gun at him. At this time, Finbar confesses that he did not kill her brother, but is aware of the perpetrator. Doran demands the responsible person, and Finbar agrees to bring him to the bar that evening. Or we leave a special delivery that'll blow that pub all over Donegal. So no tricks. The gangster woman agrees, but warns to detonate the entire bar if he fails to arrive on time with the culprit. In the evening, Finbar informs Kevin of his intentions to meet Dorian at the bar. He explains that he is compelled to eliminate her. This excites Kevin, who has always aspired to be involved in such a mission. Later that day, the two rendezvous outside the bar. Kevin comes armed, but Finbar insists he doesn't need them as he has the necessary tools. Suddenly, he hands him a substantial amount of money and advises him to start a new life elsewhere, perhaps in California. He urges Kevin to leave the fight behind and no longer squander his youth. Upon hearing this, Kevin becomes emotional, as no one has ever been so kind to him. Following this, Finbar enters the bar, and a few seconds later, Vincent joins him, who informed about things. When the curious sheriff asks about his current occupation, Finbar replies that Vincent is better off not knowing. At last, he spots Doran and walks over to chat with her. Meanwhile, Conan is heading towards the bar with a suspicious bag. While Vincent steps outside for a smoke, he notices Seamus near his dented car. Shortly after, the sheriff arrives and discovers Conan with a suspicious bag. On the other hand, Finbar and Doran are engrossed in conversation. He suggests they move to the backyard to discuss the matter, but she warns him that she will shoot him if he makes a move. Suddenly, Kevin shows up, feigning interest in her. He surprises her by mentioning her name when she continues to reject him. Kevin even brags that he is the one who killed her brother. Sadly, this only angers Doran more, and she ends up shooting him in the abdomen. A tense shootout takes place inside the bar. While people flee outside, Vincent finds a bomb in Conan's bag, but Seamus stops him. Kevin manages to shoot Dorian, and Finbar also shoots Conan in the chaos. Then he overpowers Seamus before he can detonate the bomb. Seamus is shredded to pieces, while Kevin, who is slowly succumbing to his injuries, encourages Finbar to move to California with the cash. Just then, Doran shoots him in the head, killing him. Finbar moves to pursue Doran, but Conan stops him, and so he angrily kills him in retaliation. Moments later, Doran walks out of the bar, and Finbar follows her. After a while, they reach a church, where she requests him for a straightforward shooting as a form of repentance for their sins. You're at your end. Just shoot me. Make your peace. Finbar agrees, acknowledging their shared guilt. However, Dorian dies due to excessive blood loss. Later, Finbar buries her in the forest and plants a tree on her grave. In the final scene, he meets Rita, seeking forgiveness for not sharing his past. 
Rita assures him that no explanation is necessary, and the movie ends with Finbar expressing gratitude and departing, embarking on a journey to find a new life.